Can you hear me? Buddy, I can hear you real good. Oh! (laughs) (laughs) Solar flare! Welcome to Relaxed Retro Talk, episode 30! We did 29 of these. We're doing a 30th. Today, it's, it's great news. Today we're talking about uh, the fact that there's just so many games. Some Loads really good, some not so good, but lots of games. It's hard yeah. to keep up, honestly, now with all the game releases. And it's abnormal. It is abnormal. It is abnormal. Get that yawn out of the way. It is Get it abnormal. Out of here. This, it's abnormal that there are so many games because I I can't help but feel like we just got through a like a massive drought. Like for the longest mm-hmm. time, there was nothing. Yeah. Right. Like very very little. The odd game here and there. Most of them were sequels. Right. Yeah. And, and now it kind really of feels... are, but there's a lot of like. There's a lot of original stuff. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'll take an inspired by over oh, a Sam. 15 or a re-release of freaking a game from OG yeah. and 64 era. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which those are fine too, but it's, it's just like throw it's just, them on the pile. Stop There's it. So yeah, many stop, games, stop doing it. <laughs> There's so many games. It's it's It got to a point where like, I want to say like before 2018, it was like no games right so everyone was just playing retro games and their backlog and stuff like that and uh now it's like when when are we touching the backlog like (laughs) let's go get it in there yeah 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 and and it's and it's growing at a at a rapid pace the other i think i think we've reached a point where we have a lot of really good publishers Mm -hmm. um I, I i briefly mentioned it on the last uh podcast but like donkey's publisher company oh, yeah. big, big mode fish. big mode yeah. big i thought it was big fish big mode yeah so like and and he specifically said like look i'm gonna do this thing but i'm not gonna publish any games that i don't specifically like and so because of that it's like you're getting quality finally yeah. somebody who's releasing games for an audience that is going to actually like them not hmm. just to try and make cash money they're gonna yeah. make cash money but 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 that's that that ends up being kind of making yeah, money due well, to success. I think they'll make more money that way, Absolutely. right? Like if they go out just to make the money, that's not how it works. You exactly. can't just go make you just make money. Yeah, that's you have to pick it, it from the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, you got that. You got big mode. You got like Devolver Digital's always yeah, like I, I think yeah, that's what absolutely. it is. I think it's smart publishers now. Like it's just uh, the publishers are are finally waking up to realizing that. They're getting nowhere by just trying to make the shareholders happy. Mm-hmm. I'm speaking, by the way, of companies that aren't like the triple A's, the yeah, Activision, exactly. the Microsofts, the Blizzards, the freaking all of them, right? The, the Square they Enixes, all, dare I say? The, the Square uh, Enixes, the Ubisofts, the they Ubisoft, suck. Yeah. They're not, they're not going to get the message, and you're going to get what you pay for. If you continue to support those companies, even though they're releasing games, they, it is what it is. Hey, I'm yeah. glad you found a game you like. That's as not long as me, you like it, that's what matters. That's right. Your fun is valid. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. But, like, even, I gotta say, even maybe Square Enix is turning the old ship around. Dragon Quest 3 HD2D Remake just got announced oh, this past week. I, I saw that, but, but I also, so, fantastic. Great news. I gotta say, I'm a little concerned on the price points that they decided to come out with, right? So. Yeah, I, it, it it's going to depend on the game, right? Like, you, oh. you're you a diehard Dragon Quest fan, so oh. you're already in, right? But for somebody like already me... Already bought the $250 collector's edition. <laughs> I figured as much. 
<laughs> but but I mean, for somebody like me, that's that's not that ha- that ha- I don't have any nostalgic. Uh, right. feelings for the game so i look at that and i'm like well there's no way the collector's edition's not for me and no. that's fine but you're gonna charge me full price for a game like that then you got to give me full price experience for a game mm-hmm. like that right yeah. you can't give me what you gave me on the nes it's got to be yeah. better than that and from what they showed it looks really good mm-hmm. but we've talked about it before we don't buy games except for this time for you apparently <laughs> We don't buy games until release, right? Yeah, and so this one won't be any any different. I will wait until this one. The other thing I found with Dragon Quest games is they go on sale regularly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they do. since there's a backlog, and I'm in no rush oh, to play absolutely. that one. absolutely. I'm excited Probably for play. you to play this one, actually. Yeah, that one I'm actually going to give a, a good Basically, the issues you had with the other version that you played are completely they're resolved. S- in they're time. supposed to be completely fixed, so yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Dragon Quest One was fantastic. Yeah. That, that's great. Uh, any, any improvements on that is just gravy. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do with Dragon Quest Two. Yeah, because, I know. Uh, How do you turn I, that around? Well, it'd be really easy, honestly, like because with three, they're going to be adding, um, like, map markers, like, showing, mm, like, this mm-hmm. is, like, where you should be going yeah. and stuff. And, and so and that, that, that fixes, like, most problems. of two's problems, I, th- I think honestly. that fixes, like, 99% of my issues yeah. with two. Um, Cave to Rhone would be the only other concern yeah. that I have. But I feel like, I feel like if you, I did, a, <laughs> I did like, actually a whole video on how they could fix up Dragon Quest 2 specifically in an HD 2D remake. And my biggest, when it came to Cave to Roan, I was like, I kind of don't want them to mess with it too much because that's Mm kind of like, that's like legendarily the most difficult fucking dungeon, right? In like the series. And so I think, I think what you do, and I said this in my video, but is you, you put like a checkpoint halfway through. Well, and here's the thing, actually, I don't think you need that now because you've got auto saving every floor, right? So if you die on that floor, you just try it again. Yep. Whatever. And 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 that would, that would resolve it. I don't need, I don't need a, like a rest zone. I don't need to be replenished. I don't need any of that. I know what I'm getting into, but finding the cave to was a problem number one. So yeah, resolve that with map markers and then getting through it in one sitting. Yeah. If they're going to be, be building out the game a little bit. Yeah. Checkpoints I think would be the right solution there. Yeah. That would, that would keep the integrity of the, of the second, of the second game, the original game yeah. uh, back intact still. So uh, yeah, and I'm looking forward to it. I also, they also said that three is the prequel to one and two. Yeah. So I'll probably play three. Uh, but I mean, I can't help but feel for someone that doesn't know anything about Dragon quest that felt a little bit like a spoiler yes and that's what i was gonna get into with with like because i i was talking about earlier like a few weeks ago there was like a leaker who thought that it was gonna be all three at the same time right yeah and i was like oh okay but doesn't that kind of like ruin the spoiler of of three right and mm-hmm. then it's like eh, but I, and i didn't want to talk about what the spoiler was at the time because we didn't know what was happening right yeah and now that it's confirmed three's coming out and then one and two are coming out next year hopefully i'm hoping in spring summer at yeah. the latest because you want to keep while it's hot you want to kind of keep yeah coming. well they'll probably be able to reuse the game engine just Assets replace the and sprites yeah. in the map right like yeah. so i think i i can't imagine it would be too bad to turn around a little bit yeah and then <laughs> the but the thing is like there's still people don't know what the connection is like once mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. once you beat dragon quest 3 you'll be like wait what was the connection and then boom so i still think i still think that's still going to be there but not right. to the degree it was not like it was in. yeah so yeah. so picture this you beat and i don't want to say the the part that's like still going to be a spoiler but you sure. beat Dragon Quest three, and then after the credits, it says to be continued in Dragon Quest one, and that just that was like, because the whole time you're like, whoa, is this that? Is this that? Is this that? And then at the end, it's validated. It's like to be continued right. in Dragon Quest one, and you're like, shit, that's awesome. This was it's a like, prequel. Because you never yeah. expect that, right? You never expect. Yeah. It would be different if it was like you played one, and then two was a prequel, and then whatever, mm-hmm. right? But it was like one, and then two is kind of like a sequel. And then it's not a direct sequel because it's like 300 years later. Or it's whatever. years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then three comes out and you're like, 
okay, this one, this this is very different than the first two, but okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh, maybe this one doesn't have as much to do with it. And then it connects kind of near the end. And right. It, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it coming out this way release order wise, but I think it makes sense because yeah. in order, how do you sell someone on a remake of Dragon Quest 1 first without proving what you can do to improve 3 that's already, like yeah. 3 is already really fucking good. <laughs> So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah no, I, I mean, there's there's, there's no downsides to any of that, right? And I mean, yeah. really, like, we're talking about a game that came out, like, almost 40 years ago at yeah, this point. No so, yeah. so, I mean, uh, the the, the, the expiry date the expiry date for spoilers kind of ended. So, yeah. it is what it is. That's the other thing. You try to maintain it as much as you can, but. Yeah, that's the other thing, like, with this whole, like, there's <laughs> there's too many games. Like, there's, there's too yeah. many fucking games. There's too many games. But. You look at, like, all the new games coming out. You look at the games that have come out this year already. And Mm -hmm. then you look at all the games that we haven't played yet that have been out for the last 50 years. You know what I mean? Like, it's so crazy. Like, it's overwhelming. Yep. In a good way. It, I, it's a good I'll take thing, this, but I'll take this every day of the week. Yeah. The fact that I have the ability, so I already have like a like a crazy backlog mm-hmm. of games as it is. But let's say that I didn't. I have the ability to pop on Steam, on the PlayStation Store, on the Xbox Store, wherever it is that I get my games from, and I'm pretty much a stone's throw away from getting a good game in my hands. Yeah. And being ready for something. I think I think based on the release schedule that's coming down, there is at least one, if not many, games for basically any type of game player yeah. out there. If you're into video games in any way, yeah, shape, or exactly. form, like, there is something, something coming for out for you yeah. that is a good game. That's not just like a, yeah, I'll play it. It's like, wow, that looks great. I want to mm-hmm. play that. Right? So, so much good uh, stuff, Yeah, man. a lot of good stuff coming, which and is I great. Think, I, I, think, I love it. I think it, like with all the good games coming out and and the overwhelmingness almost makes it easier to play your backlog though because then you can like Mm -hmm. wait for sales right you're not totally you're not like you don't unless it's a game that you've been like waiting for forever like with me with dragon quest 3 hd 2d it's something like it's like oh okay this came out well i'm gonna play these and then once that comes on sale i'll grab it and then i can finally play it kind of thing right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that helps a lot with that with that part of it too yeah absolutely no it's great it is a good problem to have. <laughs> did you watch the um, any of the Nintendo Direct stuff or not really? I did. I did watch the Nintendo Direct one. I skipped forward a little bit on some of the stuff that I kind of just Didn't don't care, care about. about. There's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of like those those um, how, whatever I don't know what you'd call them, but they're like an RPG, but they're just a storybook kind of thing. Like yeah, you just kind of listen. You kind of listen to them tell the story, and then you play a little bit of it, and then yeah, you continue. Yeah. Those aren't really for me. Uh, I'm not the target demographic for that, yeah. but uh, I'm happy there's a lot of options for it, I guess. Yeah. Um, good for you guys. I'm glad that there's lots of those games coming out. But, yeah. Um, no, I, I caught the vast majority of, uh, of, the, um, of the direct, and uh, people are going nuts over the Zelda game. Yeah, which... that's what I was going to ask you about. What? So when the trailer opens up, of, of the Zelda game. I'm like, mm-hmm. holy shit. Because, like, I'm not a Zelda fan. I like um, the original. I like A Link to the Past. Mm-hmm. I like Link Between mm-hmm. Worlds. And then, like, Oracle of Seasons. Like, the, sure. the that style. You know what I mean? Like, the sure. uh, mm-hmm. Link, Link's Awakening. The top, the top down S- yeah. SNES pi- pixel style. Yeah, exactly. So, when I saw the opening, and, like, Link looked really cool with, like, the mm-hmm. tunic, and he's got, like, the, he throws the hood back, and he's all, like, badass. I'm like, yeah, they yeah. took the Breath of the Wild style guy, Link. Yeah, yeah, but in that. And stuck st- him in that style. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, oh, man, this is sweet. Uh, I can't wait, because uh, Link Between Worlds was so good, and it's probably my favorite Zelda. And, like, it, I think it might be better than Link to the Past. And so to get another, like, new game like that, because we got Link mm-hmm. uh, Link's Awakening, but that was, like, a remake. So mm-hmm. to get, like, a new game in that style, I was super excited. And then they were like, oh, and then he gets, like, trapped in that little vortex, and then you're playing a Zelda, and I was like, oh, this could be cool, too. But then it's like, I don't know if I like the whole, like, you just, like, stack fucking beds, and I don't know, man. It's just, like, pure it's... puzzle instead of, like, yeah, I like I like the fighting and stuff in the in those kind of Zelda games. But... Yeah, uh, it's 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 not it's not a game for me. No, um, same. Link's Awakening was okay as well, but it was it, I don't know. I 
I struggle with Zelda games a lot. I think it's same. kind of the same as you, it's right? Be a I think really I think special Zelda well, game. Well, they for me they too. try to be bigger than they are, mm -hmm. right? Like they try to be this grandiose and uh, look, Zelda fans, I'm not trying to piss you off, right? Your fun is valid, right? <laughs> You're good. What I mean is that <laughs> uh Ocarina of Time Majora's Mask releases on the N64 mm -hmm. and it goes right? Yeah. And every game after those games released had to be up here. Mm -hmm. If they weren't up here, the the vast majority of Zelda fans were like, "This sucks. It's not what we wanted. We want blah 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 blah." So then yeah. they get well. Remember no, when Wind Waker came out and everyone they, was like, everyone this hated Wind Waker the shit. art until yeah. they actually played it, right? Yeah. And that's what I'm saying is it's just like the fan base is 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 this like real heavy duty. Like there's there's the casual players, great, they're great, but the hardcore Zelda fans are really really hard to please mm -hmm. when it comes to games and incredibly critical and then <laughs> the game releases and it's the best game on the planet best like, game ever no made. other yeah. game ever c compares to yeah, it whatsoever every time right and so i've i've burnt out on on zelda games because I, i'm not a 3d platformer person Same. so and right let, then and let there alone a 3d platformer with a character <laughs> who can't fucking jump can he jump and at least in in Breath of the Wild? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but the games are based are based around solving puzzles. There's yeah. fighting, but then there's the solving puzzles part. And so if you don't like puzzles, yeah. there's not you're not getting a lot out of this anymore, yeah, right? Exactly. Like so um to fast forward past, you've got now a game that was a remake of a Game Boy game. Mm -hmm. A game that's based on that remake. Uh, there's, I don't know, like it, it, it feels like a, an extra long reach. I'm sure the game will be great. The Zelda fans will be happy with it. Mm -hmm. I um, so. I, I think, I think there's a real push in not only just the gaming industry, but literally across the landscape for strong female protagonists. Right. Right. And so what, uh, what better strong female protagonist than to put the literal name, name of the franchise in a finally her own game. <laughs> well, I guess there's that shitty um, wand of Gamelon game on the scene. Yeah. Guy. There's a lot. There's, I think it's hilarious that like it was, that was like the wand of Gamelon, but in this, her weapon is the, is this wand, right? It's the wand. Yeah. Maybe so it's like, Gamelon, but... it's like, it is the wand of Gamelon. <laughs> it's back. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I I probably won't play it. No, same. it's not. It's not a game for me. But I I'll watch somebody play it. Yeah, I have friends who are massive Zelda fans. They will one hundred percent buy it because they just buy every Zelda game that ever gets released. Yeah. Um, I I think if you're expecting something in the realm of uh, Breath of the Wild, you're going to be a little disappointed. Yeah. I think if you're expecting it to be like Link's Awakening, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, I that's... I really wish that they would have picked a, their own, like they would have released this game in their own kind of flavor rather yeah. than making it off of Link's Awakening. But with that being said, and I mentioned it before when we were talking about the Dragon Quest games, they're probably easy enough to use the video game engine and then just replace some oh, things, yeah. reorganize it, and send the add game assets out. to like a like a what do they call it like an engine and everything right? yeah and then you got a new game or wait not go. so bad so, yeah i yeah, really I, oh yeah. man it was so like disheartening for me because like i said i don't like a lot of zelda games but the ones i like yeah. i really like right like oh yeah for sure like fuck man if we could have got like another link between worlds and especially that when that nice. what's that that would be nice, yeah. Well, especially when that like that like vortex opened, I was like, "Oh, mm -hmm. this is gonna be like a sequel to a Link Between Worlds, right?" Yeah. And then it and then it was like, "No, Zelda stacks beds, <laughs> summons moblins." Uh, uh, speaking like, of Link to the Past and games like that, though, did you see that the Game Boy Advance emulator on the Switch yes, dude. Is on, has that game on there? And can you play swords, that online? Which we gotta play. Okay, so you can play it online. Yes. Okay, dude. but do you have to have the upgraded? membership I don't know, to play it for the gba we'll have to check that out yeah we'll have to check that out i have because if we don't then one for some fucking then... reason but <laughs> do you really yeah i hey i mean you know what they got good games hey, on it there's nothing wrong with that. Hey, boo, you know what but we could also <laughs> par we'd also parsec that bad boy we probably could yeah but uh, and uh, my computer um, could definitely handle running three or four visual boy advances <laughs> that was rough dude when me and fate streamed dragon quest nine yeah, uh, we had to run two Melon DS emulators, and DS emulators right. are very like asset 
hung like they'll they like totally yeah they use all space. the assets and i'd run both at the same time and so he was controlling the one on the ds emulator on this side and i was controlling the one on this side and right dude like my laptop was getting hot <laughs> it's and like, like light on fire yeah it was brutal dude but i think um, i think a visual uh, game boy advance emulator would be fine though. probably yeah um to the nintendo direct what uh, what did you think about the metroid prime 4 announced i See, I have like zero care about Metroid. I don't care about Metroid Prime. But, but <laughs> I will say that Metroid Prime, I looked at it like Half Life Three. Like I thought there was no chance. I figured this that was Metroid done too. Prime yep. Was ever coming out? Like I figured they would like remaster and remake them into mm-hmm. the fucking. Sun. Like they did. Yeah, they did make them again. Yep. And but I never. I honestly thought like okay. They're not going to ever make a Metroid Prime 4. So I'm very happy for the Metroid fans. Yeah. Way to go, Metroid Anyone fans. Anyone who likes bad games. Everybody gets games. If you Everybody like bad games, games, you got another one. No, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. But I, I can't get into the I can't get into the Metroid games. I never... Prime was well received. It's just not a game for me. Exactly. I played the Metroid Prime for like 10 minutes on like the GameCube. And yep. it controls really weird on the GameCube. That's so mazy. And they're they're all so mazy. Yeah. Like you gotta turn into a little Metroid ball and you roll your way through tubes mm-hmm. and then you gotta get through a door and you gotta it's roll really, it. It's really I would say Metroid Prime is really fun to watch though. It's fun to watch, but yeah, that is not no that is not my game. There's a lot that, of games that, that are like we could probably do a whole fucking podcast on games that like I don't like to play but like to watch people stream. Right. We'll do that. I'll write it down, and we'll do that for the next episode. Okay. Because I don't. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, I'll keep talking about it, and then. <laughs> and we'll never get to the Xbox. Yeah. The poor, poor Xbox. Um. I. Yeah. I don't know. The. Uh, the only other thing that I'll mention, uh, about the Nintendo Direct, the Mario and Luigi game looked pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. It looked fun. Um, if you like Mario. It looked like stuff. one of those games that you could like throw down with a with a buddy, right? Um, and then other than that, it felt like a lot of games that they're ripping from back catalog. So they, they did the, um, Marvel versus Capcom kit. Ooh, I'm excited for that. Which, Cause that there's a lot of like good. those old, like X-Men fighting mm-hmm. games. And then yeah, that the Punisher, Pun- the Punisher. Beat em up game. They really, dude, they really jumped in on Punisher arcade game there. Hey, yeah. they were like, battle it out with your buddies. Do do do. Or play Punisher. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it just felt really hammered in there. Yeah. Like. Me and Faith um, streamed that game like three weeks ago, man. It's a lot of fun. fun. I enjoyed that game. That one was great. Um, they were let, they announced a new Mario Party game, which great. It's Mario Party. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Here's um, my want to want to hear my little conspiracy <laughs> theory on the it, Mario Party hit game. Me, hit me with it. Yep. So we're nearing the end of the Switch's lifespan, right? Oh yeah, any day now. Yeah. So because they're coming out with like the Switch Two or whatever it's going to be called. Sure. So my theory is that they've got a warehouse full of fucking Joy-Cons, and you know for a fact, the Joy-Con, the most fragile fucking (laughs) Fisher-Price fucking controller ever built, is not going to survive Mario Party. No. So they're just trying to fucking break as many Switch Joy-Cons as possible. So people are having to buy their kids new fucking Switch half a Switch Joy-Con for $120. (laughs) Gotta burn through a Joy-Con like it burns through your hand. I yeah, I, Mario Party is a, f- a fun game. Yeah, it is. It is not a game that I buy. No, it's a game that like someone's like, hey, you got Mario Party. You want to play? You got one. This? Yeah, you got one sure. friend out of a group of like everyone on the planet, yeah. and you're like, they invite yeah. you go over there one night, and then it, you yeah. never play it again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have I Mario say, Party too. I think I've played it twice. I have in Mario my Party life. too. I I I, <laughs> two or I three will times. say that I I enjoy I I like the fact that they put it online. Because now those Mario Party people can play with themselves. Oh, yeah, I guess. Right? Hey, like, I've never heard yeah, of like, all Mario online. Party. I never even thought of that. Was the Wii yeah. one online, do you know? No, no. no none okay. None of them were online up till the last one. So oh, this new okay. one's coming out is online, but the last one was the first one with online oh, I never features, if I that. remember correctly. Mario Party? Yeah. Oh, I guess, yeah, if you're in, like, Discord chat, I guess it would, it would still be fun. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't be able to yeah. just... Imagine Mario Party not with no voice with chat. no voice. And it just, yeah. like... Like, where did all my stars go? Where the fuck did all my stars go? 
Yeah. It, like, you need... The banter is, like, yeah. 99% that's, that's, of Mario That's Party. the fun part of the game, yeah. Like, yeah. that like time... You, you, Finny Dustin and Bo- Finney? Yeah, dude. That was so much fun. And Bubs was With just, With the Mario like, heads looking up and down and stuff. And yeah. Like dude, Finny that was fucked. So I mad. felt so bad for Finny because we were, like, all locked in, and then... And then Finney would choose a side, and then Bubs would just change it. And, like, it would let him. <laughs> I don't know if that minigame's broken or what. No, it's just it's supposed to be that way. All the mini games are, are there to, to piss everybody off. <laughs> yeah. How they work. That's it's like how Monopoly. They work. Everyone goes in best friends and can't oh, fucking yeah, no. stand Mario each Part other. Oh, yeah, no. Mario Part angers up the blood. Yeah. That is. I used to play the slow game, so I wouldn't win any stars. I would just wait until someone was winning and then as, and collect coins. And then as soon as you get towards the end of the game, you just start spending the coins to steal other players yeah that's what my uh, wife stars. did and, and, all, and then you like, just and then you win at the end of the game and yeah then everyone hates you dude my <laughs> wife and i were almost never dating anymore because of that <laughs> same situation happened i was like doing really well there was like four of yeah. us and i was doing really well i was in like second like kind of neck and neck for first and second sure and she took all my fucking stars it's, oh yeah it's fucking no, you Two don't other go people after, in the room. No, yeah, but you don't go after first place because that puts a t- target on your back. If you if you steal from the lowers, oh you catch God. up to first, God. and then you and then you make your kill shot. I got so first. mad, like fucking yeah, Mario. It's a game Party within now. the game. Mario Party is terrible, and uh, I don't recommend Brings you out play the it. Evil in everyone. <laughs> And I play it, like, I don't do that ever. I've never, like, no. stolen shit. I just try to win it, Oh, no, honestly. I steal. I steal so many. I'm, I'm not fun to play Mario Party. <laughs> <laughs> one of these, one of these, because I got, like, the N64 ones. Yeah, we're going to have to fight. I, wanna, I want Finny to have his rematch. Yeah. And I want to be there. <laughs> yeah, me, you, Bubs, and Finny, we should do yeah. one of these times. We'll do a four-player. That'd be a good time. That would be good. Speaking of Mario Party, did you know Fusion Frenzy was like a Mario Party on the original Xbox? Segway. Oh, that was one of the few Xbox games I played because Finny had it. Was it really? Yeah, Finny yeah. had Fusion it. Fusion Frenzy was a lot of fun. It really was. It was, what again, it was one of those games that I didn't own, someone else owned, and it was really fun to play. I had no reason to buy that game, though. <laughs> no shit, yeah. So what was your... <laughs> Because you actually had an Xbox. I had an Xbox. So you know what's funny is the uh, original Xbox was my first video game console. Mine. I didn't have to share it with anybody. Nobody else bought it, and I just used it. It was literally 100% mine bought with 100% my money. And when, It was great. What was the uh, – <laughs> so what – like p- put yourself before the X ex- before yeah. you have an Xbox. Mm-hmm. What? Why did you want an Xbox? Uh, like, uh, my older brother was like, "You want an Xbox?" I was like, "Yes, I want." Oh. An Xbox. <laughs> you just told you, that? but there was like the, no, was, like games uh, that you like was, saw was, coming out. Yeah, that... yeah. So he came home at Christmas that year, uh, because the Xbox released in November, ish. I might be wrong there, but it was around that. November-ish, 2001. He got a launch console, um, and I got mine, like, January. And he brought his Xbox down at Christmas, and he was playing Halo. And I was like, I need to play this game. Right. (laughs) It was so much fun. Well, you were, like, a first-person shooter guy big time, especially at that time. I was big into, at that point in my life, like... Yeah, at that point in my life, I was I was Counter Strike and Team Fortress Classic, and playing on like competitive teams, right? Like yeah, online oh, yeah. competitive teams. Um, and so when when I saw Halo, I was like, I have to play this. This was so good because he brought it down. We played multiplayer on it. It was it was no, like nothing I've ever seen. And that how... type of game didn't exist on consoles. No, it didn't. No, like that. It was it was amazing. How did the controls feel? Because when so good, that was that was like the first. It wasn't the first game that used that control method, but it was the one that definitely mm-hmm. cemented it. It's it did, yeah. So it's funny. Halo had multiple control presets built into it. So it had a Call of Duty preset. It had a battle zone battle. Uh, battlefield preset it had its own default controls and then you could customize the control so if you were coming in from another first person shooter right. on the console you could basically copy and paste your your con- uh, control set oh, to so it they would make it but, work for anyone but... but by default it was two sticks right off the yeah. hop right 
Um, it wasn't like Goldeneye where you used one stick and you just kind of aimed yeah. wherever you were you were looking, which made it hard. Yeah. Um, this one here was great because it allowed you, it, it trained you immediately to use that second joystick. And it's just natural to, to look around with that one, right? Yeah. It takes a little bit to getting used to, but I mean, you could hand that control to anybody and they'll oh, get, the, get the hang of it pretty quick. Um, and so, yeah, 2000, 2000 and I think January 2002, I pick I got my Xbox and like I said that was that was my first console. Up to that point every single console I had either was owned by my older brother or shared mm -hmm. with my younger brother, right? right? Like there wasn't anything that I had that was just mine right. because I didn't have any money. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like I was working a job at this point I had some money. Yeah. 500 yeah. bucks and I got myself an Xbox and Halo. Um <clears throat> so when he was telling me about it uh, cause I was looking at the PS2 and I had mentioned this, I think in the, in the last one, um, <clears throat> the reason why I liked the Xbox is it had the hard drive built into it. Mm -hmm. So you didn't need memory cards, right? But they sold memory cards. Yeah, I was going to say there was memory cards though. Right? Oh yeah. There was yeah. memory cards and what memory cards would do is, so you play halo, you create your character, you customize your character, you save it onto your memory card. You take your controller to your buddy's place, plug your controller and you've got your character. Oh, okay. Side. So it allowed you to to like create save data and put it onto that thing and carry Where it. did the memory card go? Was did it go into the top console? of the controller? Oh, there okay, two like slots the Dreamcast. The top of the controller, exactly like the Dreamcast. Oh, okay, the Dreamcast had a window on the controller. Yeah, but the uh, I I wish I had my original still. Um, but the but the uh, original had two slots in there, right? right? And so I always wondered why there was two slots on these controllers. It never made any sense to me until xbox live released right? right they designed the console to work online but they didn't have the whole thing functioning until the next year until 2002 oh right? okay um but i'm jumping ahead of myself so uh the hard drive and the memory cards um it could play dvds but you needed the media kit which was a, a remote control and a little ir sensor that you would plug into a uh controller port Oh, so it. you couldn't use the controller to... Mm -mm. Oh, that's no. so weird. If you stuck a DVD in, it would boot the DVD, and then it would say you need the DVD uh, media kit in order to play this. That's super something. weird, because the PS2 was already doing it with the controller. 100%, so it's... which was uh, a stupid thing that they... Yeah, like, they should not. When weird. they When it got to the 360, they got rid of that. Yeah. Right? But that was one of the dumbest things that they could have done, right? Yeah, I don't know no why doubt. they they chose not to do that. I don't that. know anyone that ever They wanted used to sell the... controllers probably. Yeah, I don't know anyone that ever used the Xbox to watch DVDs. I know lots of Did you? I know lots of people that used the <laughs> PS2, but Yeah, I still I, use so my I... PS2 to watch DVDs. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Um, I, I, yeah, I didn't get my PS2 until 2003-ish. So oh, okay. um, when I was watching DVDs, it was in my Xbox. And I had that media kit. It was only like 30 bucks, I think it was, right. for the remote and the sensor. It was still stupid that you had to buy it. Yeah. That was the dumbest thing, but it is what it is. Um, the original controller, the big elephant foot yeah, controller. Yeah, that thing was loved, huge, dude. Loved that controller. I one of my it. One of my favorite controllers. Um you're not alone there, by the way. I found some information. IGN rated that elephant controller the second worst video game controller ever behind the... What do you think? I don't know. ColecoVision? The worst, the worst controller in the world. Fuck. Intellivision? ColecoVision? Atari not Jaguar? Quite. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're all bad. The worst. The Atari Jaguar was the worst, followed by the original Xbox controller, that, that elephant one. It was huge. It was yeah. a massive... Dude, I couldn't even I reach the it. fucking upper joystick. Dude, I love it. My hands are never fit a controller as good as that controller did. Um, but with that being said, um, I think it was the year later. They released it in Japan first. The because ones? The, the Xbox, yeah, the Xbox was not doing well in Japan. Yeah. Um, they hated that controller. And then so what they did was they released the controller S, which was the smaller one. Right. Kind of like and then the Saturn they made that did the here. Because yeah, the Saturn, exactly. they had the big one. And then yeah. they went to yeah. a smaller um, and so, uh, that was the predecessor for the 360 controller. So if you hold an Xbox S controller and a 360 they're pretty side pretty by side, they're pretty close. There was a couple, they had a white and a black button on the Xbox controllers 
uh, that they got rid of. They were just extra buttons. Not oh, yeah. Used much. I remember that. White mm-hmm. was like start kind of, wasn't it? But not um, really. Kind of, sort of. Yeah, it, it was just, well, it had a start button. It was just, uh, they were just extra buttons. Yeah. That it had and they were like, things. were they like down kind of? Yeah, they were yeah, down yeah. In the bottom left, which was really weird. That was but, weird. Um, I mean, hey, you're going to swing, take a swing, I guess. So. I guess, yeah. I mean, it wasn't um, hurting anybody being there. Yeah. Want to know and my so, favorite feature of the Xbox that I don't yeah, think any did. other console has done since then? Maybe the 360 did, but I don't actually know if it did. Uh, so, Finny and I, probably the first <laughs> Xbox game I played, and the one we played the most back then, was... I think it was like Jet Set Radio Future or something like that. Oh, yeah. Great game. And we would play the shit out of that, but... What we would do is, I don't know how you do it, but we could just play our music Yep. Wh- during the game. Like, that was, yep. to me, that was cool as shit. Yeah, so what you, what you could do with Jet Set Radio Future is... Was it, did all um, games allow that, or just certain ones? Um, I think it was just certain ones, but basically what you would do is you would put a CD, a music CD, in your Xbox. You could rip the songs onto the hard drive. Oh. And so when the songs were on your hard drive, you put your game in, and then in the game, you could actually select your own music. Now, Just That Radio Future had a fantastic soundtrack, so I'm a little disappointed I've that you, never heard that you it. swapped the <laughs> Oh, there's a song. It's like, it's... hello, Allison. I'm going to dip my hand. Oh, it's really? like this whole oh, song. That's too bad. It's oh. like aisle, aisle 11 or aisle 10 or something like We need some cleanup on aisle 10. It's a whole oh, thing. Man. It's, it was a good Sega the soundtrack. Sega Games always really had good, good soundtracks. Yeah, so it absolutely. It was it was really, really good. Um so sorry, going back to my original story. Yeah, 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 so there was two slots on the top there. One was for the memory card, and then there was always one extra slot. Which p- p- people would be like, "Oh, you just put a second memory card in there," which was stupid because you didn't even need the first memory card, right? right? Right. And it wasn't until Xbox Live released that they had a little puck that would go into your controller that you would plug your headset into. Oh, so when when yeah. Xbox Live released, they I sold it to you that. as a kit. It was a headset that like went on your ears and around the back of your head, which was it was a weird design, but it, it was comfy. It kind of worked. I think it was the style um, at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and so and then they had that puck. The cool thing with Xbox Live was that um, they had uh, voice masking. I don't know if you'd call if it's cool or not, but it was it's different. Yeah. So you would jump into a thing. You could pitch your voice up or down. Uh, so you could okay. really, talk, really, talk, really or like high or low or yeah, sound yeah. like a robot. Right. Um, and there was like no moderation. So if you got into the lobby with the wrong kind of people, you were hearing a lot of things as a 14 year old kid. <laughs> 360 was like worse for that. I know people that sold their 360 and bought a PS3 because there were less was, people was, with three PS3s was... and, and the PS3 was more expensive. So parents right. were buying their kids 360s, right? Because you well, just hear yeah, like kids screaming. I mean, it, it it was it was devolving. I mean, when it got to the 360, at least the moderation was there for voice. But it's it was hard because uh, you would have to get a recording of people. So oftentimes, what would happen? Someone would send you a video message, and every now and then on the internet, you'll come across one like in the wild, where it's like mm-hmm. some old video recording of a guy. I don't know if you've ever heard this one. It's like, yeah, well, you're just jealous. You can't riff on your guitar like me. And it's like, yeah, beow, yeah, beow, beow, beow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'd send each other like video messages and stuff. Yeah, That's, well, like yeah, audio, audio messages. It's, it's it was it was, so what, a, what a time to be alive. Um, so anyway, sorry, Xbox Live. So my older brother beta tested Xbox Live. No he way. was one of the beta testers for it. Yeah, and there was a shirt that they gave you uh, if you're a beta tester. What did it say? It said it said something like like I'm good with my hands or something like oh, that. Okay. Like something really dumb. Uh, f- fun fact, that shirt was used heavily in porno videos. Like really? quite often. The well, Xbox it's like shirt? I'm like it's all it said was I'm really good with my hands oh, or something like that. Goodness. Like look it up fantastic story anyway so um he beta tested it and he would by being a beta tester he was able to to get his uh gamer tag like that oh like, yeah immediately right and so i didn't jump on until a little bit later he bought it for me for my birthday the following year it would have been 2003 ish mm. probably um and so <laughs> Uh, I made my gamer tag at the time. My gamer tag back then was Wing Zero, which right. um, yeah, I'm yeah. now jumping in like twenty eight months years. later. At this point, eight months after release, um, I use a, a gamer tag that is like a very popular name. 
because Gundam Wing was popular at that, at time, that like yeah. 99 to 2005 ish. So um, anyway, I go to use it, can't use it because the name's already in use. Right. Try all the different versions of it, can't use it. They're all taken. Damn. I I finally settle on Strong Bad Man. <laughs> strong oh because strong bad like strong bad yeah, yeah strong bad man you that should was have my been original x, x capital line. x lowercase x wing zero x capital <laughs> x little lowercase x i could i, I could have maybe i could have maybe but um yeah no I, it's amazing x that was such a like a crazy thing um to rewind back to why i got onto this topic the xbox was designed with a broadband port on it Okay. Which we thought was there for console to console connections. Right. But they put it in place because this was the plan all along. They just didn't have the service ready to go yet. Right. So they released the Xbox and then brought Xbox Live a year later. Right. Right. Um, and it was broadband only. It was not uh, dial up internet. So I don't know if you remember this or not, but back then there was a whole lot of people up in up in arms oh, about how they were like nobody singling had. right. They yeah. were singling people out. Like we don't have broadband. It's not yeah, available yeah. in my we area. Only had dial up. And the PS2 was like, we'll make a modem with dial up on it, and that was the the modem that goes on the back of the PS2 right. had broadband and, and dial, dial up, up depending yeah. on which way you wanted to go. Right. Anyway. Um, I remember Paul skipped so much school to play EverQuest on his EverQuest? PS2. Yeah. Did he ever do SOCOM? SOCOM his was brother the other did. One his that younger was brother like played a lot. a lot of SOCOM. Yeah. SOCOM was like the the, the big online pull yeah, for was. them. Um, my first game played online was a game called Mech Assault. I don't know if you know oh, this yeah, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was yeah? Pro- okay. popular as fuck. Such a good game, yeah. dude. Such a fun, fun game. Um, and then, uh, Midtown Madness three was the other one, Dude. which was, it was just like a open world racing game. Is that the one with like dirt bikes and shit? Uh, no, no. Oh. This one you'd like drive like mini Coopers and like, oh. it, and like you'd race around the Eiffel tower. Like it, it was just an open world. It was so much. Fun. I want to find this now. Now that you, so now that you said this, there was this fucking dirt bike game. That okay. You, I used to play all the time. The MX kid. versus ATV. No, 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 like no. That? It was older than that. It's it was PC. I only ever played it on PC. Okay, okay. And I, it was called something Madness, I think. But it could be like uh, Motocross Madness. Mo- Moto Moto Madness. Yeah, fuck. Maybe that, something like that. that uh, we'll have to. Well, now we'll have to check that out. Um, and then obviously Halo Two, right? Halo Two is like the pinnacle of Xbox Live. That was like oh the yeah, because because hey, Xbox Live wasn't really there when the first Halo came. When out. OG Halo. The only way that you can play OG Halo. So let me let me go back now to my to my plethora of, of memories with this. Yeah. Um. So original Halo. I had a small group of friends who had Xboxes. Um. And so we we started playing uh, Halo multiplayer. And so we didn't want to do split screen one v one. We wanted one screen versus one screen. So what right. we would do is our one friend Jesse, right? Yeah. He had this big long basement. Yeah. This huge. Basement. I was there one time. Right. 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 Yeah. One time so, or two times. So what we would do is I would take my TV from my my bedroom, which is like a 19 inch. I remember TV. having it in the car. The TV yes. was in the car. I was like, what the yeah. fuck? Why is the TV? It was like, no, this you was the just first, wait like, until we get there. This was the first yeah. and only LAN party type thing I've ever yep. done, oh, like man. been to. And you this was the first because like the, the PS1 had you could connect to another PS1 yep. and play like Destruction Derby. But I'd right. never actually seen anyone. Well, actually and you needed do a that. special cable for that. Yeah, right? exactly. The beauty with the X. Xbox and my older brother worked in IT while I was um while I was playing this. So I was in high school and so he was like, "Hey, do you, do you want a cable to connect two Xbox together?" I was like, "Yes, I do. How long do you want it?" We measured out his basement. We figured out we needed 75 feet or 100 feet. Yeah, whatever. It was. Yeah. He gives me this big like coiler. Up. Yeah, cuz it's it's a crossover. It's a standard crossover ethernet cable. Oh. And so he made it for us. I, we we did so much. We at a point had a tournament going where we would have four people on each screen, mm-hmm. right? And we would have run people through. Well, we got to the point, fast forward past the first few games when we plugged it in and got it working. Yeah. We had we had rules with like screen peeking. Yes, right? and you like, guys would yell at me. Oh, we got so mad. <laughs> that people would like Dookie, stop looking at positioning screen was looking. everything. And so what we would do is we would set couches up yeah, and then we had he had mattresses in the bedrooms. We would set the mattresses up vertically 
in between the couches so that you couldn't look back and see the TV anymore. Yeah. You had to get up and walk around them. And if you did, then we'd just like be like, what are you doing? Just yeah, get yeah, yeah. You cheaters. So, um, when yeah, I, it was great. When I joined you guys a couple times, mm-hmm. the mattresses weren't there, but the couches were. So, people watching or listening, it was like, so there's like a TV. So, if you have like a couch, a regular couch yeah. situation, yeah. right? You'd have the couch. And you'd have your TV in front of you and their Xbox is hooked up to that. And there's four people playing on that, all sitting on that couch, all on that one TV. But then immediately back to back to that couch was another couch facing the opposite direction with another TV hooked up, four people on that couch, four people watching that TV. Yeah. Now you didn't have a mattress at this point. So I was like <laughs> peeking over my shoulder and yeah, screaming. Like, oh, like, there he is. And right? I wasn't good at, I'm, I, I'm still not good at first person shooters. <laughs> so what I would do is I would tell the other people on my couch where you guys were. And you guys were like, fucking stop. He's screen looking. And I'd be like, how do you know I'm screen looking? If you aren't looking this way, you can't tell I'm looking that way. <laughs> just get, I was it just, was so good, man. It was. I didn't like, know I didn't know you guys had like ended up fucking putting up a barrier there. Yeah, we put, That's we put stood dude. up mattresses in between there to prevent it. Man, I got it. Like that is like top tier gaming memories for me. That is like some absolute. That's 22 years ago, man. Yeah, it is. Like. It is insane to think about how far we've come from that point. There was no internet on the console at that point. No. So when you're playing online, you're in person and there is no replacing you. You can no. I can be sitting here connected to my game, talking with all of you guys, playing our game, and it is nothing compared to having everybody you know, in the room guys in a room playing this game all connected in at the same time. It was some of the most fun gaming yeah. I've ever had in my entire life. And I think um, it was even better, like because not necessarily being friends with everyone there too, I think was actually added to it because like I knew, I, I knew you kind of, I don't know how I ended up there. Honestly. Cause like I knew we would have just been hanging out. I knew Jesse. I knew, uh, Dustin. Probably Tim. Was that, was Dustin in, in that too? Okay. I knew Jesse and I knew Dustin. I knew Tim. I knew you. Yeah. But like, we weren't friends to where we were like hanging out, right? Like, right. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. That would have been like, that would have been probably what started us. Hanging well, out. yeah, probably, probably. I mean, it, it would have been around that time, but you probably came in. We would have, we would have been hanging out doing band stuff on that same kind of time frame as well. I don't think right? so. I don't so, think yet. That would have been 2002. Yeah. Would it? 2002 would have been, um, cause I just I would remember grade. Yeah. I remember I couldn't drive yet though. Because I was like, yeah. I'd like walk there. So I remember I walked there. I wasn't old enough to drive. And somebody <laughs> told me to come or whatever. So I came yeah. and we just went downstairs and we played and it was a blast. And then I just remember, because I, because keep in mind, I don't, didn't know like what went into the setup and all that. Sure. I just knew that it was fucking the coolest thing I had ever seen as yeah. far as multiplayer just playing gaming. playing video games. And it was There's fun. Two, we were connected two games together? What the hell? Yeah. And then you were like, you were like, do you want to ride home? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, sweet. And then all of a sudden you're like lugging this fucking TV up the stairs and into the back <laughs> of your car. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, a, it was an adventure, man. It felt like, ah, oh, man, so much fun. I, I did not I, yeah, I, that. And then, and that was it. Like after, from that point on, like from, from Halo 2 forward, everything was online, and that killed all of that. There was yeah, no... Yeah, really. You didn't did. do that anymore, right? So, so much fun. That was just, like, I just think back on those, like, some of the best, most fun gaming I've ever done. We've done, like, in- in-person LAN parties. When I was in college, we'd all haul our computers in. We did, like, LAN parties there, and that was a lot of fun, too, but nothing yeah. compares to... We had a whole bunch of people. We had... Um, Oh, who were they? Like the uh, the Carberry family. Oh yeah, there yeah. There was a couple of them. Like there was a handful of people. They all played too, right? And so we ended up merging their group and our group together. I think there was one point we had like twenty people in the basement oh, at wow. one point. Like, and we were just subbing people in, right? Yeah. Like it, it was just it was so much fun. Anyway, um, the last thing that I have before I've got I've got a big list of games to talk about, but yeah. the last thing that I have on the Xbox, like an idiot. I sold all of that original Xbox. No, stuff. all of it to buy Xbox 360 stuff because the 360 was, it was compatible. It's compatible. 
And so, and I needed money to buy the 360 yeah, stuff. That makes sense. And so that's how I did it. It does, but I wish I didn't do it. No, I, know, I think I think back, back now. But at the time, you can't even blame yourself, yeah. though. I can't, I can't, but it's just like, it's one of those things where I'm like, man, like if I could go back in time, if I, I would 100%. Turn back <laughs> I would 100% <laughs> tell myself not to do that, right? Yeah. Because like, I, I just like I had a I had a stack of games like this. Mm -hmm. The Xbox is just a solid console too. I don't know if you've seen it um, recently or not, but a lot of people still use that as their primary emulation machine. Oh, really? Because you have the ability to put a hard drive in that thing. Right. You can literally make it the the gaming console. It will play anything from its generation down. down. Right. You can put the entire catalog legally legally. Um, you can put you can put everything on there. You you can use it as a primary right. like gaming system, right? But so, why would you want it with those controllers, <laughs> dude? No, I the, hated the S the, the S controller. I think redeemed itself. The only thing was the D pad, and Microsoft cannot make a D pad. No, period. Awful. The D pad on the original Xbox wasn't as bad as future xboxes is a 360 had a terrible d-pad but the one on the on the og had like these nubbies on it oh, um really? terrible for fighters though right like when you have to like roll the d-pad yeah. to make an attack it was like it was like nub so it would like go up and then down and then up and then down like oh. that and so you would like you would bruise the hell out of your thumb that trying to like sucks. do that dumb dumb microsoft stop making d-pads pay sony or nintendo and Take one and it's like it's not that hard to make a fucking. It's not that hard. Pad. the the current The current gen, I got one. I got an OG, uh, an actual Xbox One controller. the The D pad on here, it's not that bad, but it's clicky. I don't know if you can hear that. No, I can't. But can't hear that. It's, it's zooming out, but it's it's clicky. So with that being said, right to roll it, it's actually not that bad. Oh yeah, that would. But be it's bad. but it's it's clicky, so it's got well, buttons. Well, it's still under small. It. Like uh, to me, yeah. you still need like a full size D pad, and it's also yeah. in the wrong fucking spot. <laughs> Dude, I hate the. Yeah, I hated it on the on the Dreamcast even. Like the yeah. D pad being yeah, down you, here you've and never the joystick been a, way a, up top alternated. like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, what I was gonna say is. Because with Halo, and I don't know if what came out first, it would ha I would think it would be fucking Quake 3 Arena, but... So mm -hmm. Quake 3 Arena was on the Dreamcast, and it used yep. the same controls as, like, that Halo kind of control okay. mechanic. Yep. But you don't have two joysticks on a, on a Dreamcast controller, so it used the fucking the face buttons as the joystick. Oh, it no. It was horrible. Oh, so, no. So you, like, to... Because what is it? You you move with this, right? And then you look with yep. this. So to, yep. like, look to the right, you would hold, like, the fucking B button. Oh, that's awful. It was I don't like awful, that. dude. <laughs> it was so but bad. But Arena was a lot of fun. I had it, it on was PC, though. Fun. Yeah. Definitely um, don't play it on the Dreamcast. Play it on the Dreamcast. <laughs> but you could get uh, a mouse with your Dreamcast. You could play it that way. Oh, well, yeah. then, yeah, you could absolutely um let's I, I have a bunch so we i mentioned fusion frenzy so that was a fun game that yeah, was mario so, party so stuff. what were the first games you got like obviously first halo games, would probably yeah. have been your first so halo was the game that i got with my uh with my xbox um i did have jet set radio future that was a lot of fun too yeah i have that that uh, was one game like because I, I got my 360 like fun. last year or whatever mm -hmm. and i was like i was like I want to play uh, Lost Odyssey, and I want to play Blue Dragon. Lost Odyssey, and that was, was like too. literally why. I Blue bought Dragon it. was good too. Yeah, literally why. Yeah, I bought so, it. and then I was like, I need to get Jet Set Radio though because that's yeah. what we played. So I got that. It's and so then, much fun. And then did you play Gotham Racing or some shit? Yes, Project Gotham Racing Three. I bought that, and I didn't really like it, but I no, I just I remember mean, it racing... being popular, so I was like, oh, I'll grab this. Yeah, so those those are like OG racing games, right? You yeah. got to remember they came up from. So if if when when you're playing a game like a a, a PlayStation One N sixty four racing game, yeah. Right. That's what eventually led to like Project Gotham Racing, right? right. Ridge Racer, Project Gotham Racing. Yeah. And so when you play games like that, you, you keep that in mind. It's like and the it, Grand Turismo like, of mm. Xbox, basically. It, right? Kind of. I mean, Forza Motorsport 1 was when released that come on up? Xbox. That was that the original Xbox? Late, though. Yeah, it was oh, OG Xbox, probably that. 2004, 2004, cool. 2005. It was, it was up against um, Grand Turismo A-Spec. 
Okay. Gran Turismo 3 Ace so back. I remember you had the P. I think you had the PS2 Gran Turismo, but it was like I did. It was kind of like not it was not as fun. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I bought it because I thought it was like Gran Turismo 2. Yeah. It was not like Gran Turismo 2. I mean, it was still a racing game. I I was into racing games for a while there. Yeah. Uh, and then I kind of fell off. But I mean, like, so I had um I had Halo, Jet Set Radio Future. I had Blue Dragon. Which I tr- I didn't really get into, but I was at a point in my life where where RPGs weren't really doing it for mm-hmm. me. Um, I had Morrowind. Oh, because yeah, that was a Morrowind big one was on a Xbox. lot of fun. Yeah, it was so buggy though, it and was I was it? really really bad at that game. Oh. Morrowind requires you to be smart, and you can't just charge ahead, right? And yeah. so you have to like really pay attention, read the story. And I mean, oh. at this point in time, two thousand and two, I'm uh, let's see here. 17? 14 oh, no, yeah. no not even 17 i was like i think uh 15 16 somewhere around that right that age and so i mean i'm not interested in that kind of stuff um i played my very first uh dynasty warriors game that was dynasty warriors 4 oh okay uh I, I had never heard of the game before i saw it on a demo disc an xbox demo oh, disc. xbox did those too yeah, they had something called the official Xbox magazine or official. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what the PlayStation, the PS1 jam packs and shit would come in the. PlayStation yeah, and so magazine. I would buy them, get a demo disc, and then they had this Dynasty Warriors game on it. So much fun. Just run through and just like whack, 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 whack. Just like, I had no idea about like the history aspect of it. It yeah, just was a fun They're game. just fun to play. Yeah, they are. Um, Midnight Club 2. So some of the some Ooh, of the racing those games. Those were popular. You remember that too. one? Yeah, yeah. That one was a lot of fun. And um, the other racing game that I had was uh, Need for Speed Underground 2. Okay, so that was like about when I got out of the Need for Speed games because I would play. Yeah. I would play them on like the PS One. Yeah. I okay. Need for Speed. Yeah. yeah. So underground 2 was a phenomenal game right but it came out at a time where like gone in 60 seconds and fast and furious was like uh. box office and so they were that was midnight club 2 um need for speed underground 2 there was another one too that was along the same lines i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head but they were all like these street racing games yeah, right yeah. And you would be a street racer you build up your car need for speed underground 2 was such a fun game because you would customize your car you would earn new parts you would put them on you race new things the soundtrack was fantastic fantastic game all 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 all, all the way through did you um, play um what the fuck was it the burnout games were those on yes. xbox as well so burnout one two and three and four all released on uh og xbox oh okay. except four got re-released onto the 360 if i'm not mistaken i think oh, i think okay. both of them got like greatest hits uh, i might be wrong on that but I'm pretty sure. But Burnout 3 Takedown, so much fun, dude. Yeah. Takedown was one of my I think I played absolute that favorite quite a bit. Burnout games. Yeah. yeah. It's just so much fun. Just, like, unbelievable. Um, Soul Calibur 2. Oh, I was playing yeah. A lot Soul of... Calibur 2 was, like, super popular, too. So much fun. We I played it at Chad's terrible. place a lot because we played the... Because everybody wanted had the to play Nintendo Link. One. Yeah. Yeah, he had the Nintendo one. So I had the Xbox One. The Xbox One had who did it have in there the tekken guy oh I think. maybe so each oh, so each i think the, platform, didn't the ps1 one have the tekken guy PS, maybe the playstation had the tekken yeah. one so so oh, oh it had spawn have, xbox would have spawn, had spawn. that's what it was spawn. Yeah. each of the platforms had their own special character yeah. nintendo got link playstation got the tekken guy and then yeah, Xbox got the spawn guy. Yeah. Uh I played so much Soul Calibur 2. I sucked at it. Yeah, I was same. so so bad. I, I'm not good at I am not good at those games. games. Fighting games were never my thing. I was always bad at it. Um, I had Splinter Cell. Oh, that was and that was the game time. that that was the game I learned that I am awful at sneaking games and espionage games because I never finished it. I, uh, I, I I sucked at it. I'm not good. And I got really, really frustrated and I quit. I was like very uh, anti Splinter Cell because I was like Metal Gear Solid. And I was oh, like, was it was it like a like a rival versus thing? Kinda, yeah. Did they release Splinter Cell on different. PlayStation Two though? It was multi platform. Um, maybe I don't know. Okay, but I I just remember like 
being like Metal Gear Solid 2 is way better. <laughs> well, Metal Gear Solid wasn't so hyper focused on espionage, though, was it? Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh okay, then I probably won't like those games. Very no, you much. probably wouldn't. I might, maybe, maybe now, but back then, I because I remember being in this the one stage, you had to shoot all the light bulbs out. If you missed even one light bulb, they would see you and you'd you'd game over right yeah. then and there. But after you shoot the light bulbs out, you have to put your night vision goggles on. And anyone who flashes you in the face with their oh, flashlight blind blinds you. you. Yeah. And it was the mo- like I just I couldn't I couldn't do it. I was super frustrated. So good game, Tom Clancy. You got me. <laughs> yeah, I, got I, me. I never Tom I never Clancy played was another on fire show. in that era though because that's oh, when man. like Rainbow, Rainbow Six, Six and, and Splinter Cell yeah. and uh, Ghost Recon. Yes. And there was so I remember many I played Tom the Clancy. first. I think it was the first Rainbow Six. I want to say it was on like PS One. Like yeah. the worst probably way to play yeah. it. And it was so hard because it was like the first. It was hard. Like a, I'm shit at first person shooters, but b, <laughs> it was like one of the first games where like it was went for like realism. So if you get shot once, oh, there's yeah. a chance you're gonna die. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was like, this is the shittiest fucking game I ever yeah. played. That was the one where you had to like breach the doors. You put the door breach mm-hmm. on it. You turn the thing. You breach it. You go in. Yeah. I played, dude. Um, I don't know whose house it was. It was like one of my mom's friends' houses, and they had like a kid, and and they had they had. Rainbow Six on PS1 and fucking the Marsh Martian Gothic on PS1. And it is like <laughs> the worst Resident Evil clone you can oh, ever no. imagine. It was so bad. And those are like the only That's two brutal. games they had. It was fucking dog shit, man. The Martian Gothic. Yeah. Love it. Um, let's see here. What else did I have? I had so I had Mech Assault, I mentioned that, and Midtown Madness 3. Um Oh, yeah, so Dude, there was a games. game that we played. Um, there was a game that we played. So I didn't actually own this one. Jason owned this one, but it was called Hunter the Reckoning. I don't oh, know I've if I've talked it. to you about I've this one. It. So you is told this me a top... little bit about it. Oh, it man, is this awesome. top, top-down shooter type of game? Um, it was, like, based on, like, zombies and, like, uh, like, evil rising. And there was, like, a priest, a sheriff, a, like there's four different kinds of characters you could play and they all had their special abilities and you would it was pure co-op right, right. so like you would all go and you would play um that one was so much fun we played that like crazy um uh, they released a sequel called redeemer that wasn't as good as the original but we played that one as well uh battlefront one and two both released oh yeah at this dude. point in time and that was those the best console fun. to play them on too oh yeah those yeah. were both fun and and two used xbox live so you can play online right. with, with friends on that one as well uh fable fable was super fun super that was a really too. really good game um baldur's gate dark alliance one and two released during this period of time mm-hmm also both fun games i played those on ps2 a lot of these i played on ps2 and then yeah multi-plat games i remember um so i played the shit out of like battlefront one and two and i think i used Mm -hmm. to bring it over i think it was after you graduated i would bring it over probably bubs would play it like your younger brother would play it all the time Mm -hmm. and i remember going to finney's once though and he ended up with uh the the xbox version of battlefront 2 and like Mm. i was a i was a playstation guy so it was it wasn't called the Xbox, you guys. It was called the shitbox, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and we, I would go to Finney's, and I'd be like, oh, play it on your shitbox. And then we would play it, and it looked so much better on good. the Xbox. Yeah. Like, it looked yeah. crisp. Yeah, the hard, the hardware in the Xbox was nuts for the mm-hmm. time. It was good. Um, and so... What else? I had a couple more. There was I, one I, I need to mention before I loses my it, it loses mm-hmm. itself. Um, have you ever played Steel Battalion? Yes. Okay. Dude, so I was going to talk about that was insane. It was like games that it was like mentioned. an experience, but it's like also yeah. like super hard and not fun. Very hard game. So, <laughs> yeah. so Steel, Steel Battalion was one of those games that did not do very well. In order to play it properly you could play it without it but yeah. in order to play it properly you had to buy the 300 dollars or 400 dollars yeah mech did you ever play kits. it with the whole set i never played it but oh, you and I me did, both man. saw it remember we saw it at at uh, cam's games. buddies yeah place yeah or whatever, i played it there right one time and so um that was so much fun like just and the, and and i didn't i never wanted to do anything other than lift that little latch and hit and a, smash a jack, the jack button. yeah dude and so what i found out about the game is if you 
if you are about to explode and you do not hit that eject button before your mech explodes, it will wipe your game because you are dead. Yeah. Right. Like, it wiped your game. It very interesting choices. Um, I can see why it wasn't super popular because of the cost, the price tag. Yeah, it was as much as the console was. Yeah. at that point, it was right? cool but, as fuck, though, man. Oh man, I remember so we cool. busted out, busted it out one night at mm-hmm. I think it was like Cam's place, and it was yeah. like you got like the two joysticks. You got like I think you had like foot pedals even. Like you did. Yeah, it was, it a was whole, like a it was whole three parts. thing, and it, it was, was three weird parts because parts that connect together. We had we had like a normal table for here, but. But then we had to we had like TV trays <laughs> to hold like the rest of it up. It was like it was weird. And then it, it was, was like insane. It was the coolest thing ever to because like this was also kind of like when the arcades were dying too, right? Yeah, and arcades were on their way up. And we I, we never had cockpit style arcade cabinets ever. I don't think out here. No. And so this was like my first experience with something like that, and it was mm-hmm. so fucking cool. But it was like. I don't even think we I could beat the first level. Like it was no. just like unbelievable. No, it was ridiculously difficult. hard. Yeah. Um another honorable mention, uh Shenmue 2 was released on Xbox OG oh, Xbox. Oh yeah, right, right. So Shenmue was one of the most popular Dreamcast games and then Dreamcast mm-hmm. got canceled. So from what I understand the original game left on like a cliffhanger of some kind, yeah. like it, so did it didn't one. close the loop. <laughs> oh, did it? And then and so they then... got funding for a third and he ended that on a cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> of course um and so yeah so then they released the second one on the xbox and i shenmue was never my thing it was that's quick time events yeah and i don't have a reaction time good enough to play those games properly uh but it apparently it was a lot of fun yeah apparently it was like, i think they released great. it as like a combo on the xbox too it was like shenmue probably one two, I think probably they did it as. yeah yeah, I mean, there. That was the thing of the time is they had a tendency, and even now, but they had a tendency to re-release games. I remember, mm-hmm. they'd always do like greatest hits, and then yeah. you'd have like something else come out, right? Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy. I the 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 X. Every time I think about playing the Xbox, I'm I, I'm reminded of being in Jesse's basement. Yeah, with same. The, with playing those games and Finney's with Loft. playing Halo, Finney's Loft. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we did Finney. We did. Most of the time when we played games in Finney's Loft, though, I I find it was Dream uh, GameCube. GameCube. Yeah, well, it's because yeah. you we played you more had, GameCube, uh, I think. But that would be because you had an Xbox and didn't right. have a GameCube. Whereas maybe, I maybe didn't. That's why I didn't have either. Right. So a lot of times it was Xbox. Yeah. Um, I remember him showing me how to play Morrowind properly because I was like, this is one of the worst games. Everyone was like, oh, this game's so great. Like, dude, I would get out for an hour and get killed and be like, this game sucks. Like, (laughs) (laughs) what was what was the one after Morrowind? Was that Oblivion? Oblivion. Yeah, Oblivion was on the 360. That was on the 360. Okay, that one was fucking huge. I feel like Oblivion was like the quintessential elder scrolls experience yeah and then skyrim came out and changed it and now skyrim is the uh elder scrolls experience but if you look at skyrim and you look at morrowind and oblivion you can see how they like made it a little more generic right oh, they, made the, okay. they took a lot of like the they complexity streamlined out of the game. it a lot kind of yeah thing. and i mean that just happens with time i guess yeah. right they but, made it more oh, uh accessible for yeah like, outsiders but at this but then it waters it down a little bit kind of well and it push push their like diehards the diehards will still go to oblivion before they go to skyrim because yeah. it gives them the better experience the modding community Only for the, elder the scrolls games. true elder scrolls fans uh play a uh, dagger fall <laughs> <laughs> dude for real um <laughs> <laughs> the the modding community for Oblivion and and uh, Morrowind is insane. I don't know if you've seen some of this, Dude, but people the... have people have modded Morrowind into like a next gen title. Oh, practically. really? That's cool. Like like they changed the assets out and stuff so that it's like it's gorgeous. The, the only the only fucking I don't know if it's Oblivion or if it was fucking Skyrim. I've never played any of them. Let's just sure. let's start with that. I I've, sure. I've watched Finny play uh, Oblivion like mm-hmm. on it on his xbox something or another but i uh fucking and i watched him play morrowind too actually but um it was i think it was it was either oblivion or skyrim and it was definitely on pc it was just like okay. a video I, I saw and there's like i don't know there's some creature with like these big like fucking spidery arms that walks on yep. like all four kind of things like this okay and it's like he's like kind of jacked and weird looking 
Anyways, somebody modded them all so that they're they're like skin, like because you know how you can like get skins of your characters. Yeah, their yep. skins was the Macho Man Randy Savage, and anytime <laughs> it was like in range, all you could hear in the background is, <laughs> and then as it got closer, it'd be like, yeah, and, <laughs> and then there'd be like a hundred of them, and all you hear oh, is, oh yeah, all you just, <laughs> oh man. It's like that, that's probably Skyrim. There are some kooky mods. There was one where they replaced all of the dragons with Thomas the Tank Engine. Really? And so you just have flying Thomas the Tank Engine. It's like do 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 do. You got this flying freaking train oh coming in. Oh my god! It's yeah. It's so dumb. It's so dumb and hilarious. But yeah, it is. I guess that's the, that's for for our uh, PC game talk maybe sometime. Yeah. But, PC game's um, gonna be wild because. My yeah. era of PC gaming. How does it span? Was, how do you how do you choose? Yeah, there's so many eras of that, right? Yeah, but um, uh, what did you ever play? There was like a Star Wars game, like an RPG Star Wars game on it. Uh, Old Republic would have been released. But there on was that one where you like played as fucking like Obi Wan Kenobi or some shit. Oh I really? Think. Yeah. Um, I didn't, but that was also because I had kind of fallen away from Star wars mm. at the time i wasn't really into it anymore at that point in time yeah. um but, i played uh, Knights of the, the yeah. old republic just like a couple years ago mm. for the first time on i think it was on my switch which yeah is weird but it was really good actually and i don't yeah it held up that was probably the only because i've been playing i started streaming fallout 3 it's my first time like actually trying to finish and yeah play right through it <laughs> and like other than fallout 3 when it first came out and i got lost as fuck the uh knights of the old republic is the only uh western rpg i've ever finished in my entire life really yeah yeah that that was a, that was a really good game um and when you play that and then eventually down the road play second um, one well you the second one but if you eventually play mass effect you can see the the kind of inspiration like the, how they ah. how they eventually came up with mass effect and then all of a sudden you can be like, oh, I see what they were doing. They made the old Republic Star Wars game. Probably didn't want to pay the license anymore and yeah. made their oh, own yeah. Star Wars game, then right? They can and keep so all the monies, right? And so, uh, yeah, when you eventually get to Mass Effect, think back on on your time with with Knights of the Old Republic. And then if you play Knights of the Old Republic too, right? Obviously, yeah. it's getting closer to it. Um, uh, straight up, like a lot of the engine is is one for one, right? Oh, the dialogue yeah, eh? choice, the a lot of it. It's it's cool. It's really cool to see companies grow like that. And yeah. it's too bad that Bioware sold to EA. Aren't and, they? Are uh, they actually uh, coming out with a Mass Effect Four? Or is that that's just that's what like they rumor? said? But they also There's, released there hasn't been Andromeda. Like a tra- so there hasn't been like a trailer or anything for it though, mm-hmm. has there? No. There was a teaser. There was a teaser of showing like uh, a Commander Shepard. Oh, okay. Um and but they didn't have any actual date or gameplay or anything. It was the Metroid um, Prime of two weeks ago. Metroid yeah, Prime Four exactly. of two weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> where it's where out. it's like they, they <laughs> want they want to tell you that they're working on it. But the thing about Mass Effect is they they sold their soul, right? Right. Like the company, like yeah. Bioware sold their soul and they got their money. But because of that, now they're mixed in. Like when we talked about the beginning of the thing with. Square Enix and Activision. Yeah, they're and part of that. All now. the other companies. Well, because they're right? owned by EA now, aren't they? By EA, yeah. 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 So, it's I mean, bad. everything is DLC. Everything is add-on. Yeah. They they plan a day one season pack with everything that they release. Um, Andromeda released, and it was not good. The story yeah. was not good. And it and the story was, the story's not good in a game like that because you don't give the people enough time to iron it out. Oh, and you yeah. When you rush a, an RPG, it's done. Well, if the yeah. story sucks, the game sucks, right? Yeah. Like, and that's basically what ended up happening with Andromeda. It's too bad because I, I the way Andromeda ended, it opened the door for Andromeda Two, oh. um, which they had they had the ability to get some redemption, but the studio canned it, right? Because it yeah. it wasn't successful, and they had like problems out the wazoo like there was issues like behind the i don't know if you remember like the makeup uh, uh on the characters oh yeah and the characters like faces the... are like oh they're so <laughs> so bad <laughs> so, the, the yeah. chick the chick it'd be like a cutscene, and she's like yeah exactly they're uh, like your child died <clears throat> yeah oh no, <laughs> oh, no. I, it, but then she that... had like botox 
that was a game I bought day one and is a stark reminder of why you shouldn't buy games day one. Yeah. I've been really enjoying uh, Fallout 3, though. I'm, Fallout I think I'm probably so further than I, in these past, like, four yeah. hours than I was when I put that 30-hour yeah. playthrough in. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad because Fallout 3 was my favorite of all of those games. Yeah. Now, Fallout 1 and 2, they were a lot of fun, but they are ridiculously hard, and they're from a, an, a, a bygone era. Oh, yeah. They're from point and, point and click before Diablo right yeah, yeah so so there's a lot going on that doesn't translate anymore and it makes it almost harder to play them now because your brain can't think that way yeah um fallout 3 and new vegas were were by and large the best games that bethesda put out for fallout games um and uh i yeah you're gonna have a whole lot of fun with that one that was fun the story was good the game was good the environment's good there's a lot of like oh my god moments when you go to the wrong place oh yeah you gotta, you i gotta had get super moon shooting at me and i was like oh fuck yeah, fuck fuck no, absolutely. <laughs> Just like, there's a lot and I'm like of super early in the game like i'm only yeah. like four hours in maybe oh yeah but it's funny because yeah, i'm like four hours in but i'm further in the story than i've ever been before because <laughs> you're hyper focused i'm trying you to you got chat focus. chat's watching your yeah back. they're keeping me keeping me in line and yeah. that's what i need in like a western rpg is somebody to keep me in check did uh did, did you end up taking the guy's deal to blow up uh, megaton so here's what i did Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I to took the deal, <laughs> okay. but I thought I could sell the thing he gave me, but you can't. Yeah. So no. I I took the deal because I wanted. I was like, "Fuck yeah, free money, right? I could I sell this." Money. But then yeah. I couldn't. So I'm not gonna blow it up. I'm gonna try and uh, what unhook it or whatever, like defuse right. it or whatever is what yeah. I'm gonna try. Deactivate the bomb. Hopefully, I don't accidentally <laughs> blow it up, but uh, I'll do my best. Um, I I blew up Megaton on my first playthrough. Really. I did. What I did in my first playthrough was like, I don't know, like I, I would just like wander around and then I would save my game, kill everybody, reload the save. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I The best, but you know what? The best part about that game and New Vegas did it even better. But the best part about Fallout 3 is, is the replayability on that game is nuts. Oh, yeah. Because you can play it one way and then you can turn around and play it the other. So like I said, I blew up Megaton and... Uh, I, I'll give you a minor spoiler. If you blow it up, you yeah. get a lot of, like, you have karma, right? Good yeah, yeah, karma. the bad karma. You get a lot of bad karma. No shit. So as soon as you, well, because you just murked an entire town. So I I blew it up. My my bad karma went, like, like this. And I was yeah. like, well, guess I'm playing the evil guy. And then <laughs> every town, I walked into a town. And I was like, hi. Oh, shit. And I just took everyone out, took all their stuff. It was the best. I guess Loved you don't need it. to buy stuff when you could just take it. No, you just take it from everyone. <laughs> because, because you have no care, because you don't care about anything, obviously you get a crappy story by doing that. Oh, just okay. so you know. But um but because you don't care about anything, you grow in strength like, oh, I bet. like hey. this, right? So you get all um, that EXP. Yeah. But I, I had uh, a, I had one save for the bad guy and one save for the good guy. It was I played that game probably four or five, six times over. It was so much fun. I I, uh, I always just play those games how I like what I would do. Yep. And so the the first person I met outside of the vault was like this crackhead chick, okay. and she, and she and like <laughs> you go in like her house and she's like some guy oh uh I owe some guy money will you run him this money, and I'm like uh how about you give me the money and I'll just tell them you're like gone and then she's like oh okay thank you. And then I was like, can I sleep in her bed? And everyone in chat's like, no, you can't sleep in people's beds. They'll get mad. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I just killed her. Because I was like, I was like, I was like, uh, she was like a crackhead or whatever, right? Like, I'm not saying in real life I would kill a crackhead, okay, guys? But I was. No, you're saying post apocalyptic warfare. Yeah. Coming out of a vault. I want a house. Right, yeah. So I killed her. And then I start taking stuff, and my morality's going, like, out of whack. Yeah. 
And then they're like, they're like, stop stealing, stop stealing. I'm like, I'm not stealing. And they're like, yeah, you are. You're stealing from that She's girl. Dead. I'm like, what girl? She's dead. <laughs> this, they're like, you're taking her stuff. I'm like, it's not her stuff. It's mine now. <laughs> so, so I started off with a little bit bad morality, but I'm, I, right. I'm good now. But I was like, it balances for a out while. real yeah. quick. Yeah, like, I and mean, then I tried and, like and sleeping it's... in their bed, and then it was like, it was like bad karma. I was like, what yeah. do you mean? It's my bed yeah. now. <laughs> and le- unless you're unless you're specifically going out of your way to be like very very good or very very bad i found mine was constantly fluctuating oh, okay. right and so i think the only thing that that's that knocks you out of is like certain perks need certain karma oh, in order okay. to use them but i mean i i play the same way you do i make i make a gut dec- decision based on like what i think in that moment mm-hmm. um and i tend to go towards the the good the paragon Usually. options yeah, more yeah. so but i mean it is what it is sometimes someone rubs me the wrong way and i'm like oh I don't absolutely like this fuck this guy dude oh, the uh the because like <laughs> It sounds stupid because, like, all the moments I'm talking about are in, like, the first, like, four hours of the game. But <laughs> yeah. the, uh, that bully, that kid that's just, like, a prick to you oh, on yeah. your birthday. And yeah, then he's, the like, he's like, yeah, and then he's, like, picking on that girl. I just started beating the shit out of him and his buddies. And then they're, like, <laughs> okay, whatever. Oh, stop it. And then his friends walk away. And I just knock, I literally knocked him on Concha. <laughs> and then I kept hitting him when he was on the ground. <laughs> that's good because like you he don't have it. to do that right? it. and then i did save his stupid mom at the end too and then i didn't know because you're supposed to like apparently save the get help the girl with something i didn't know that. okay so i didn't but she they then uh doom dog was like if you help her she actually dies so he said it's a good thing you didn't go help her and i was like there oh shit okay <laughs> but yeah no it's been fun it's there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot. And it's the game's designed to be played multiple times, right? Like yeah. that's how it works. Because then you do like the new game plus, you carry over your Oh, stats I didn't know that. Through and yeah. Yeah, something I think I'm pretty sure you can carry over your karma maybe or something. I don't oh, know, okay. I might be wrong. I get those games confused because Fallout 3 and New Vegas both came out pretty close in in time frame to each oh, other. Oh, okay. Um, and uh and New New Vegas. So if you enjoy Fallout 3, you'll really enjoy new vegas new vegas is like fallout 3 but better where fallout 3 has a very clear linear path that you should walk and it's like this is where you need to go this is what you need to do here's how you should be doing it you should be the good guy but you can be the bad guy Mm. if you want new vegas is like what do you want to do and that's it that's it like oh see and every single thing i think every single but the thing is the game the game rewards you for that too right like if you want to go worse Cause then I'll never, <laughs> I'll never progress story. But what I mean is like when you do something, the game reacts to you doing it rather than you reacting to what the game's doing for oh, you. Right? Okay. There's the obvious main quest, and it tells you like, hey, to get to this, you got to go here to oh, go do that. Okay, okay. But there's nothing stopping you from just turning the other direction, going that way. It'll be harder, but you can do it. Right. Right. There's choices you can make. There's this you can do. You can take this guy out. You can help that one out. You don't. They, there, there's video. There's a video essay that I watched on New Vegas, and like the sheer like amount of work it would have cr- must have required in order to build it out because it's like to trees allow for are all those trees options. Are nested trees. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's, it's well, just insane. like uh, Baldur's Gate three when we talked about Baldur's Gate three. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Same idea. Yeah, same company by the way, Obsidian. Like that's the same. Ooh. It's the same team that did it. Um, actually, sorry, not Obsidian for Baldur's Gate three. Baldur's Gate three was a different crew, but still, um, Similar still pretty sweet concept. Um, same idea. Yeah. The so when you were talking about Fallout one and two, they're actually uh, someone's doing a complete conversion mod of Fallout mm. four to play okay. all of Fallout one, and then there's the, there's another one that's all of Fallout two. So they're remaking it in the Fallout four in engine. that world. See, I would I would it, play that. Fallout one had an amazing story. I yeah, that's re- what I heard. I really really liked one. Two was a little bit mm, not so great, um, but it was still fun, right? But yeah. Fallout the original Fallout game. I don't know if you've ever played it. But... I I yeah the. The first one I think was the only one that I played a little bit of, and it's I saw so I know hard. how like the, it ends and stuff, and like the options for the ending, which yeah. is crazy. It was one of those like crazy games that like they they built, and then you think about from the for the time in the time frame when it when it was released, and what you got out of that game is it's crazy. But 
that game is so hard. It is so hard oh, because it was designed that. for somebody who plays video games that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Right? Like, like those people don't exist anymore. In order to play that game, you need to learn that game. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people aren't going to give it that time uh, to do it unless you're going to do, like, speed runs or something, right? So Yeah. So what was the... What was, like, some of the last games you remember playing on the original Xbox? On the OG? So Halo 2 would have been one of the last ones that I played on the original Xbox. Um, The Xbox 360 released in 2006, 2005? Something like that. Um, And so by that point in time, I wouldn't have had a whole bunch of games on my Xbox anymore. I jumped in on the 360, uh, and I was playing games on that one instead. You got um, the 360 pretty early, like when it was... Pretty early, yeah. yeah. Not on launch, because, uh, I, again, I was a broke college student, so I was using yeah. my older brother's 360. Right. <laughs> but I did buy my own 360 around the time Gears of War released. Oh, So okay. I think that was the year after, maybe the year after that. Nah, it wouldn't have been 2008. 2007, maybe. Um, and so, uh, but but I was living with my older brother at the time in an apartment building, so we only had oh, one yeah. TV anyways. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, we only had one TV anyways, so uh, I just kind of bought games and played them on his Xbox. Right. <laughs> so I remember, is. like, with Halo, like, I didn't play a lot of Xbox. I played mm-hmm. at Finney's and with you, basically. It was the yeah. only time. But I remember... Um, there was we played we would play Halo One, and I was really bad. Like, I was the guy that couldn't figure out for the longest time like how the twin stick aiming and movement worked. Sure. So I got the movement down, but I'd be just like running around strafing sideways, looking this right. way a lot. Yeah. And and so then Finny, I don't know, Finny came up with this idea, but we tried beating Halo without shooting. Like as as much okay. as possible, so we would just like pistol whip everybody. Yeah, and yeah, and that's pretty. And I was like, so. I was like way better at that because I didn't have to like turn to like aim really, mm. and I just loved those little. I call, I don't know what they're called. I called them shark babies. The, yep. the guys with the big fin on their back. Those guys. Yep. Those were the best. What are what are those? The actual those are the, those are the covenant. Covenant shark, shark babies. Halo, soldiers. And and then I'll get you the actual name. I we I still have yet to beat it, but I do remember playing on one of his load save files because there's that at the end you're like driving your jeep down that long corridor. Do you remember okay. that? Yeah, I do. Is that the very end? That is pretty much the end. Yep. Okay, yeah. So I think he let me just like load on one of his saves, and we played that part together. But we played like the first few things, and then we got to where like the flood was, and we could not beat it because. You can't beat the flood while just punching them. Like, there's just yeah. too many. It's just like, boom, they're just coming. Yeah, so the little guys are called grunts. Oh, well, that's a lame name. Come on. But Well, Shark they actually babies. have a they actually have a name called the Ungoy. Oh, there you go. I don't, the, the I don't know. We would, I would have always called them grunts. Um, the big guys were elites. Yeah, I remember the those Seng- guys. Sengali. Sengali. Singeli. Oh, that's like what they're called in like their term kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I just remember yeah. the warthog Man, controlling a lot. so weird. Oh, there, I love the way that the, the oh, vehicles worked in the warthog. It. The warthog worked that you looked where you wanted to go and you drove. Oh, I and hated so, it. Well, that's all you would do. It just felt so just... snaky. Like you'd be like, yeah. like, like just dragging <laughs> the back end. And yeah, because then... you you would think that you would control it like a remote control yeah. car, but you actually just aim in the horizon. Yeah, which direction that was it was weird. Um, did you ever in multiplayer? Because again, this is. I think Finney just tried to make ways for me to have fun in a game that I sucked at. We would do, um, we'd put a mine. So I'd play with me, Finney, and his younger brother. And mm-hmm. we would we would play, like, deathmatch. But really all we would do is we'd park the, the Jeep or Warthog in, like, yep. an open area on Blood Gulch. We would call it Blood yep. Gitch. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Gitch is Saskatchewan slang for tidy whiteies. Underpants. Did you know that was Saskatchewan slang? Because I didn't. I didn't. I, didn't I, know that I, I was said slang. it, and it, and it was like I was like, okay, my American friends don't know what I'm talking about. And then I said it uh, to like Sasseray and I think Fates, 
and both of them were like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" And I was like, "Is this Saskatchewan <laughs> slang?" Like, like Maybe, Bunny yeah, Hug? I don't know. I'll but, have to ask some of my uh, Alberta friends yeah, to see if they know what Gitch is. I'm sure I've heard them say Gitch before. But... Yeah, but anyways, we would, we would. Uh, We'd... Also, what you're saying, this is normal Halo. Like, you got to a point in this game where you made your own fun. Oh, okay. Because yeah. so, we would, yeah, so we'd put, good. like, a, uh, a mine or a grenade or something yeah. under the warthog. And then it would yeah. go in the air, and we would keep our have our rocket launchers. And we'd, we could see how many times, how long we could keep the warthog in the air right. with our rocket launchers. I remember yeah, you used do. to You used to have, I don't remember what it is, but you used to be able to, like like stagger explosions mm -hmm. and you would set it off with a plasma grenade. So you would stagger it off with like, like a box of grenades or something. You'd throw a plasma grenade and it would pop up and it would leave you boom, boom, boom. And you could try and see how many times you can get the, the warthog to flip before it falls to the ground kind of thing. Yeah. But we yeah, would shoot a, it that's with that's rocket launchers and try oh, to and it was, like, it keep like, it up in the yeah, air. Yeah. Like, you know how with like a balloon, you'd be like, don't let it touch right. the ground. We keep would do that with the, uh, with the rocket launchers with the that's warthog. Hilarious. All the yeah. time. Yeah, you, I mean, you got to a point where you played Halo so much, you just kind of made your own fun yeah. with it, right? And then, so, like, that's when, yeah. and then, like, achievements came out, and we were like, oh, sweet, there's going to be achievements for this kind of stuff. But then, like, yeah. nobody really plays games like that anymore because no. now the achievements are, like, like legit things that yeah you play through the game in the game right yeah. yeah yeah that's the thing and i mean and i don't know we maybe when we talk about the next generation because uh, the thing yeah. is like i said i mean this console started without internet and it finished with it yeah i don't think gaming got better after this point right the games uh, got better yeah i don't know the experience of gaming right like when, I was, yeah. when we were talking about like that land it's, party it's so it's, hard to it's, say it's, it's, it's different it's so hard to say um on like a an unbiased level because it's really hard to talk about it because yeah. like in a vacuum it's hard to say if this was the best generation of gaming because we were also at that age where well, we didn't have to we didn't own a home we didn't you know what i mean we didn't sure, have to go sure. to work we we could yeah. literally get home at like 3 15 right and play video yeah. games till fucking yeah. two in the morning with our friends absolutely with zero responsibilities yeah so yeah, and what, is and it that I, that makes us think that that tell us in the comments totally. if you're if you're watching or listening yeah. to this yeah phil listen was it i want to hear that? your stories because i want to hear people that either were even younger than us mm -hmm. at this time like we were like anywhere from like 15 to 18 basically at this time right yeah. and then yeah. i want to hear people that are like way older than us like like in their like mid 40s even right mm -hmm. saying like was this the best generation of gaming or yeah, is it because we were at the perfect age to do this kind of stuff totally i don't know if i would say this is the best generation but this is definitely where where it's where the 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 drop off happens, right? From yeah. this point forward, gaming's not the same anymore, right? Yeah, like, that's true. That's I true. I personally think, and I'm biased, but I personally think the SNES Gen Genesis era that's your favorite is is my favorite really uh, generation. Uh, after that, the PS one PS one PS one Xbox. That's a really solid gen. But the problem with that is I felt that too many like I look at those those PS1 games and they're like they're they're gross to look at now. <laughs> right? Like yeah. I can't play half those games anymore because they're just not like Yeah, like a lot of them have tank controls too. I can plug that damn S I can plug my Super Nintendo that's sitting on the shelf right back there into the TV and it's just like being right back yeah, where I was that's again. That's true. It right? aged and really so, well. It aged so well, right? The games were good. Maybe the stories weren't so fleshed yeah. out as they got because, I mean, obviously that's a limitation of yeah, the hardware. system itself. But I got to tell you, man, from this point forward, from, from the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, from that point forward, gaming's not the same anymore. No, now you've got true. DLC... It's online always. On disc DLC. Everything. You know what I mean? That was like a big deal when they found it, that out. The the concept of taking your Xbox to your friend's house to plug it in and play yeah, Halo that's with them, no longer it's gone and it's happen. it's it's never coming back. Because yeah. why would it? Right? Like it, it was a pain in the ass hauling that giant TV around yeah. in the back of my little hatchback hatchback car. Yeah. But but just you know those four hours, you have a pizza and some pop, and some chips, and you're yelling at each other for screen peeking mm -hmm. while you're playing on Blood Gitch. Yeah. Um. It's just. 
it, it was just top tier. It was so much more. fun. Yeah, yeah. it it's almost makes crazy. me feel bad for like the it younger does. gamers. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, they never... have they're gonna have their own memory. They've got Among Us and yeah, uh, Fortnite, that, right? Okay. Like, that's just that's pretty fun. I mean, it, but it's not it's, the it's, same. It's it's what it is, right? I mean, Roblox and yeah, all of these Roblox. other games that they. Garbage. But I mean, those are the games <laughs> they they suck to us because they're they're not designed for us they're designed for them right like yeah that's that's their world and but that's what and i mean in a vacuum was that the best era mm -hmm. to be a gamer yeah it's 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 I that's think, a really tough one i, I want to I, I do want to hear from the yeah from the let people. us know in the comments i want to i want to say that the from like a couple years after the genesis came out until like Three quarters of the way through the PS2's like lifespan was the best mm -hmm. era to be a gamer. Like, right? Just because like it was so exciting. Like mm -hmm. the graphical jump from Super Nintendo Genesis to PS1 N64 was like unlike anything we could have imagined. And then the PS2 Xbox thing, it, the jump wasn't as big, but it was just like what they could do with games at that time totally. was so different. And you had, you had genres coming out that didn't exist because they couldn't exist too. Right. Exactly. Like, yeah. It was just like, that was like, it was just, that was probably the best time. The, the most <laughs> exciting so time to grow up with, f yeah. as a gamer would have been through that time period. I, I think, think so. I think so too. Yeah. But so. yeah, good, good guys, stuff, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Um, Check us out. We're on Spotify. Uh, you can also check us out on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash dukey03. Um, we stream also three nights a week at least each. Um, I'm twitch.tv slash dukey03. He is twitch.tv slash DG online. Give him a follow as well on his YouTube Give me channel. Follow. Uh, Ooh, yeah. So I subscribe to his channel. YouTube channel. We're trying to get so that because we want to set up so like he can dual stream to youtube and stuff like that yeah. and you've got videos you want to make but it's so hard when you start a new youtube channel and there's it's like so hard fucking dude. two people subscribed yeah. right you're just like i think i think yeah i think i need to get to a hundred subscribers in order to do stuff yeah in order to, to even any. name my channel like, yeah dude it's dot com slash dad gaming online i don't think it takes you anywhere so my youtube is at dad gaming online you can find me there. Um, if you if you send me there. your um, your gamer tag, I just both said. Sure, I'll send I'll send you the YouTube tag. I'll my, put it. I'll my, pin it in the comments of this video. Want, here, I will read out my channel. And, oh and let's see. Let's see how I do this. Okay. Let's see. So it's www.youtube.com. Yeah. Slash channel. Okay. Slash uppercase U, uppercase C, uppercase C, one lowercase X, L, one W, uppercase U, one eight, lowercase P, S, uppercase C, three, eight, six, lowercase Q, B, B, uppercase N, B, M, A. Rolls off the tongue. How can you not find it? Like, come on. But it's like YouTube went from like the world is your oyster to uh, yeah. we're going to put you in the garbage can and close the lid for yeah. now. Good, Good luck, <laughs> like, schmuck. Yeah, it's so bad, man. But yeah, it's, it's get, tough. Get I, a, everybody look, subscribe it. to his channel so that he can actually start making videos because yeah, you don't like want to start that. making videos when you, nobody's going to see the shit right that's right so. it's 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 a hard it's it's the chicken and the egg do you make the videos to get the people to come in or do you get the people to come in and then you start making the videos yeah right. i if if it's a thing if look if you're willing if you're willing to do it i do post shorts and stuff there mm -hmm. i have ideas for videos and i will be posting things on there this year that is that is a goal of mine this year to post i tried one thing with like a D, &D thing um, and my D and D campaign's coming to a close, so I'll have a little bit more time than I have. Up, right, uh, that's up true until too. Now. You won't be working on um, that all the time. And so, yeah, no, it's just it's all good. Everything's good. Everything's great. I love being here. Um, I love doing this podcast. And uh, yeah, tell us, tell us all about your favorite games, Xbox games, and... your experience growing up with the Xbox, yeah. why you yeah, got the if, Xbox. You... If you all if you're all shit. if you're all in on the Xbox, I was I was a massive Xbox fanboy. I've I've since grown in my ways. I don't really care about consoles anymore. So, <laughs> but anyways, guys, have a fantastic rest of your day, and uh, thanks for watching and or listening. So long. <laughs>